Okay, welcome to I Lecture Online, and here's another example of how to deal with rotating objects. This example is a lot like the previous one, except in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to apply a force uh, directed from the center of the rotating wheel. Uh, force is 120 newtons, and we're trying to find the acceleration of this wheel. Now, one of two things can happen. Either the acceleration, the force, is so great that the acceleration is so large that the wheel cannot keep up and keep up what I mean by that is and let me draw the forces uh, here's my red pen so let me draw the forces on this wheel we first have the uh, force of gravity uh, pulling down mg and the normal force from the surface pushing back up which is uh, n the normal force and that of course has to be equal to mg and therefore we're going to have a friction force directed to the left force friction which is equal to the normal force times mu which is equal to mg mu now, why is the friction force directed to the left? Well, the following is going to happen. Let's say that there's no friction at all. Let's say that mu is zero, so there's no friction force between the wheel and the road. And let's say you apply a force of 120 newtons this way, the wheel is simply going to slide across the road and it's not going to rotate because there's no friction force to causing it to rotate. So it's simply going to slide without rotation. If there is friction between the tire and the road, then the friction force will cause the wheel to rotate like this. And if the accel acceleration is not too large, there actually will be a static friction between the wheel and the road because the wheel will be able to keep up to the acceleration and it will not slip. In other words, the torque provided by the friction force will be sufficient to give it an angle acceleration sufficiently large to keep up to the translational acceleration of the wheel. So the way to solve that, the way to figure out whether or not the wheel is going to slip or not is to write down the following two equations. First of all, we have a translation acceleration, so we can write F equals MA, that's using the Newton's second law, and we can also write the rotational equivalent of Newton's second law, which says that the torque is equal to I times alpha. This is the rotational equivalent of Newton's second law. Torque is replacing force, moment of inertia replaces mass, and angular acceleration replaces linear acceleration, so it's the same thing except in rotational sense. Now the torque provided by the friction force is going to be equal to the friction force times the radius of the wheel, because the torque is going to equal the force times the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the point of rotation, which is the radius of the wheel, and we put the radius at 0.6 meters. That is going to equal the moment of inertia, assuming that it's solid disk, we can write one half, m r squared and the angular acceleration can be found by saying that the that the linear acceleration or the tangential acceleration is equal to r times alpha so therefore alpha is equal to a divided by r the, the translational acceleration divided by the radius so we can write this as a divided by r and then notice that this r will cancel out one of these and this R in the denominator will cancel out the other one, and so there's no radius in this equation. And then the friction force, of course, is the maximum friction force that you could have between the wheel and the tire, which is equal to mg mu. The friction force could be less, but it cannot be more than this. So we can then say that the friction force is equal to one half the mass times acceleration. And since that is the maximum friction force that can be provided to to, uh, for the torque, then therefore that will be the maximum acceleration this wheel can have before it begins to slip. Now the question is, will that force cause the wheel to slip or will it allow the wheel to rotate as it's accelerating? So now we use Newton's second law, F equals MA, and the better way to write it would be F net equals the mass times acceleration, and the net force would be equal to the force applied minus the friction force which is in the opposite direction and so that will be equal to minus uh, force friction and that will be equal to mass times acceleration now what is the maximum acceleration that we can have here that will then if we find the maximum acceleration and we plug that in here then we can find the maximum force so this would be maximum force associated with the maximum acceleration and the maximum acceleration before the wheel begins to slip can be found by using this equation so if we solve this one for maximum acceleration we can write a max is equal to two times the maximum friction force that we can have divided by uh, let's see here the mass of the wheel and so this would be equal to 2 mg mu divided by m 
the M's cancel out, and I'm left with 2G mu, which is the maximum acceleration that this wheel can have before it begins to slip. If we want a numerical value for that, let's plug in some numbers. So this is equal to 2 times 9.8 times mu, and mu is uh, static friction, would be 0 0.8 if the wheel is not slipping. So that would be 2 times 9.8 times 0.8, and that would give us 15.68 meters per second squared. So that's the maximum acceleration this wheel can have before it begins to slip. All right, so what I can do here is, uh, there's a couple of ways I can attack this. I can plug in this maximum acceleration and see what the maximum force is that I can apply before the wheel begins to slip and see if this is less than the force that I'm actually pulling with. That would be one way, so let's try that. So F max would be equal to MA max plus the friction force. And of course the friction force is going to be mg mu, the maximum friction force. So F max is equal to ma max plus the friction force, which would be 1 half a max. So therefore, the maximum force by which I can pull before the wheel begins to slip would be 3 halves the mass times the maximum acceleration. And of course that would be 3 over 2 times the mass, which is 4 kilograms for the wheel, and the maximum acceleration before slipping is 15.68 meters per second squared, and so that times 4 times 3 divided by 2 equals 94 newtons. That's the maximum force I can pull that wheel with before the wheel begins to slip. So my assumption is, if, since I'm pulling with a force of 120 newtons, my wheel will slip. Okay. If the wheel slips, then the friction between the wheel and the road will be 0.6 instead of 0.8 because now we have a moving friction, kinetic friction. So now from that we should be able to find the acceleration. So now we take this equation and we rewrite the equation. We can now say that the force by which we pull minus the friction force between the road and the wheel will equal the mass times the acceleration or the acceleration will be equal to the force minus the friction force divided by the mass. All right, the force 120 newtons minus the friction force and the friction force will be caused by the friction between the tire and the road mg mu but in this case mu will not be the static mu it will be the kinetic mu so this will be minus mg times the uh, mu kinetic I'm getting ahead of myself here so that would be mu kinetic all divided by the mass so this would be 120 minus 4 times 9.8 times 0 0.6 all divided by the mass which is 4 and so finally let's see what that is equal to so I have 4 times 9.8 times 0 0.6 subtract that from 120 and divide by 4 and we get 24.1 so 24.1 meters per second square and that would be the acceleration of this wheel because the wheel will slip and therefore there will be kinetic friction between the wheel and the road and we can figure out what that kinetic friction is because the friction is mg mu and then we subtract that friction force on the force that's applied, 120 newtons so instead of the maximum force allowed before slipping we use the actual force, 120 newtons and that gives us an acceleration of 24.1 meters per second square that's how we do that